I'll be talking on uh, surgical management of ocular surface nerve neoplasia. What do we do currently? Dr. Kaaf has very beautifully elucidated the role of topical immunotherapy and chemotherapy, which is very real. However, there are very specific indications for surgery. A patient with invasive squamous cell carcinoma, or despite all the imaging modalities that you have at your command, if you have no definite conclusion about the invasion or the depth of the lesion. If the, has, if the tumor has gone beyond the epithelium into the stroma, obviously there is no role for topical therapy. If the tumor is localized and nodular elevated, then chemotherapy may work, but not as beautifully as it does in diffuse placard tumors. In patients who are intolerant to topical chemotherapy, or those where you suspect the patient may have poor compliance. For example, this patient was started by somebody else on topical therapy. You see here already that this is an invasive tumor. You can see that the posterior lamina of the eyelid is involved. The sclera is involved here. And promptly the patient has gone worse over a period of three weeks. So this is definitely not a candidate for topical therapy. Of a tumor of this sort, which is a mucoepidermoid ocular surface tumor neoplasia with a very small breakthrough, but it is highly elevated and nodular, this is unlikely to resolve with topical therapy. But when we go to surgery, if you look at the literature, some of the review articles show that the rate of local tumor recurrence is as high as 33% which is simply not good because we are looking at a malignant tumor where we expect nearly 100% local tumor control, which is actually possible. Local tumor recurrence is mainly because of microscopic residual tumor at the edge or the base of the tumor or because of systemic predisposition that the patient may have, such as xeroderma pigmentosum or immunocompromised status. It is also now known that recurrence of a tumor is the strongest factor predisposing to loss of vision, loss of eye and metastasis. So we have to prevent local tumor recurrence. And if we have to do that, then we have to fall back on renowned oncological principles, which are whenever you operate on a malignant tumor, we are supposed to have edge clearance. And if the tumor is very extensive, we can reduce its size preoperatively by new adjuvant topical therapy. We're also supposed to have base clearance. And then based on histopathology, we are supposed to provide adjuvant treatment to minimize the chance of local tumor recurrence if the patient has any risk factors. And in patients who are predisposed to local tumor recurrence, such as those who have syndromic associations such as xeroderma or HIV seropositivity, then you do local immunomodulation to minimize the risk of local tumor recurrence. Let's look at each of these. How do we assess the extent of the tumor or the edge? Slit lamp is a great idea. Meticulous slit lamp evaluation actually tells you where the tumor ends and where normal conjunctiva begins. But there is always a small zone of transition, which you can identify by the varied architecture or thickening of the conjunctiva, for example, on slit lamp and also anterior segment OCT. But if you really have a doubt as to where the affected conjunctiva ends and where the normal conjunctiva begins, then you can st stain with rose bengal. Rose bengal stain is taken up by subclinical part of the tumor. Even subtle epithelial affection of the corneal epithelial affection of the tumor is stained with rose bengal, so it demarcates the tumor quite vividly, thus making the job quite easier. So your differentiation of the edge of the tumor is better with rose bengal stain. And what if a tumor is very extensive? This particular tumor is so large. Of course, you can do surgery. But if you can reduce the tumor by using newer adjuvant chemotherapy or newer adjuvant immunotherapy, this larger tumor has now been restricted to a smaller residual. That's because this is the tumor epicenter where most likely invasive squamous cell carcinoma is supposed to be. That is surrounded by a zone of carcinoma in situ, severe, moderate, and mild dysplasia, 
all of which goes away with topical therapy and what you finally have is a small residual tumor to excise so if you have a very large or a diffuse tumor and finally if surgery may be required despite which you can try topical therapy to reduce the extent of final surgical intervention hs are relatively easy but what about the base one way of assessing the base is to move the tumor on top of sclera by moving it with a wet cotton tip applicator but if a patient has a epistleral adhesion of a tumor like this the tumor is adherent to the epistera we have no way to know whether the tumor has involved the sclera or not or how deep into the sclera is it then you fall back on imaging oct and tumor are very uh, methods to image the depth of the tumor in this you see clearly that the tumor is involving the only the conjunctiva tenens in fact this bubbly layer is tenens is free epistera is free so your plane of dissection can just be subtenens so you preoperatively know the depth of the tumor if you do anterior segment imaging this is a patient where there is predominantly corneal ocular surface squamous neoplasia we don't know how deep into the cornea is it would we be able to excise it completely or not you do ubm and you clearly see here that this particular part of the corneal stroma is thickened as opposed to normal stroma there so corneal stroma is full thickness involved here either this patient would need a penetrating keratoplasty or you have to resort to plaque breakage in patients who have extensive tumor where you cannot do gonioscopy or when you cannot see through the tumor to see if the angle is involved then again anterior segment imaging is very useful to know if the patient already has iris anterior chamber angle or ciliary body extension in such patients enucleation or extended enucleation is a choice or plaque breakage good news about imaging is that it actually correlates with what we see on histopathology you see the oct here is very very closely mimicking the final histopathology that we have so imaging is very useful in predicting the depth of the tumor what is bad about imaging is that if there is a lot of keratin then there is shadowing so that precludes assessment of the depth of the tumor if a tumor has lot of keratin then you may not be able to reliably assess the depth of the tumor so you still be it will be a judgment call on the table as you operate when we talk about surgery we talk about excision with tumor free margins alcohol assisted keratoepithelial epithelectomy cryotherapy to the resection edge cryotherapy to the resection base is optional but this is mandatory excision with 4 mm tumor free margins alcohol assisted keratoepithelial epithelectomy for the corneal epithelial component of the tumor resection edge cryotherapy with a 3 mm cryoprobe would give you an additional 3 to 4 mm margin clearance for subclinical part of the tumor which you may not be able to pick up on slit lamp may not be able to assess on imaging may not even be able to stain cryotherapy to resection base is limited to patients where there is one or two clock hour of tumor adhesion slightly deeper into the cornea or onto the sclera where you think that there may be microscopic residual despite doing a lamellar surgery there lamellar keratectomy is reserved for patients who have tumor which has gone beyond the bowman's membrane bowman's is a very good barrier to the tumor to go into the stroma so you don't want to disturb bowman's but the tumor has already gone into the stroma and it's superficial then you can do lamellar sclerectomy lamellar keratectomy and similarly for superficial invasion into the sclera you do lamellar sclerectomy This is a video clip that shows uh, the way we do excision of ocular surface squamous neoplasia after having localized its extent. We mark the edge of excision with a uh, bipolar radio frequency electrode and excise either using a monopolar RF electrode or scissors is perfect. The edge is being excised at this point in time. Then the edge is held, the unaffected edge is held with a forceps and the tumor is dissected off the epistera under visualization as you approach the limbus the blood vessels which feed the tumor have to be cauterized then you dry the cornea and apply absolute alcohol to the leading edge of the tumor about 3 to 4 mm beyond the visible edge of the tumor 
to denature the coronal epithelium and also make it loose so that you can simply scroll it off the Bowman's membrane. Then you reach the limbus from the corneal epithelial side. We have already reached the limbus from the conjunctival side. So finally, we have to do what is called superficial limbectomy or excise the tumor of the limbus one edge to the other. So that is uh, the excision at the limbus under visualization. Completely a control procedure where you see exactly what you're doing. That's resection edge cryotherapy, a three millimeter cryoprobe going under the excised edge of the conjunctiva, freezing the excised edge and you spontaneously allow it to thaw it and do it twice over. That's double freeze thaw cryotherapy all along the excision margin. Excision based cryotherapy in this patient we are doing because there was an area where there was slightly deeper penetration of the tumor. We're not sure until we get histopathology, but upfront we can opt to do this if the area which is suspicious is about one to two clock hours, not more than three clock hours of Limbal cryotherapy is advisable for the fear of limbal stem cell deficiency. When you are done with it, you have to repair the ocular surface either by using a conjunctival autograph or simply glue on, gluing on an amniotic membrane. That's the PC glue that we are using and the amniotic membrane is glued on to the defective area of the uh, epibulbar surface and rest of the amniotic membrane is trimmed. So this gives a patient, leaves the patient quite asymptomatic because we have even covered the, the epithelized area of the cornea with amniotic membrane. So surgery is an excellent option. It gives good results and cosmosis as well, as you see in these patients. That's the tumor preoperatively and that is postoperatively. We get nearly good cosmetic outcome. The eye doesn't look bad and the surgical results are quite um, good. This is a patient where there's about six clock hours of limbal involvement, despite which there is no limbal stem cell deficiency. Well, it does happen if the tumor extent is more than six clock hours, there's a higher chance of limbal stem cell deficiency. So if you have an extensive tumor of this sort, where you fear that there might be limbal stem cell deficiency, you can do what is called a primary simple limbal epithelial transplantation, where bits of limbus from the normal eye are harvested, cut into much smaller bits and glued on to the cornea on top, and, on top of an amniotic membrane. This takes care of limbal stem cell deficiency or prevents the chance of a patient having limbal stem cell deficiency. This is a somewhat a newer advance. Another new advance is the use of IOCT or intraoperative OCT guided excision for a tumor for controlled excision into the stroma. Now, once you're done surgery, the next Step is to lay the tumor on top of a filter paper, the edges being marked and the conjunctiva nicely scrolled off, made planar and sent to the pathologist. What does pathologist do? He tells us whether the excision edge is involved and the excision base is involved. In this patient, obviously there is excision edge involvement. So your adjuvant therapy should be guided by histopathology. You cannot leave a patient alone if the excision edge and the base are involved. This is the protocol that we follow. If the resection edge is positive and it is only dysplasia or carcinoma in situ, if you have already done cryotherapy, then you simply want to observe this patient. Or if you haven't done cryotherapy, then topical chemotherapy is good for a patient who has only dysplasia or carcinoma in situ. If the resection edge is positive and the edge has invasive squamous cell carcinoma, then at least medical legally you are bound to re excise because invasive squamous cell carcinoma has poor response to topical therapy. If the resection base is positive and if it's only localized, say one or two clock hours, then you can get away with cryotherapy. If the resection base is positive and that is diffuse, then the only option you have is plaque brachytherapy or re-excision. If a patient is prone to recurrence because of systemic factors, then you do immunomodulation. There are cases which are slightly beyond surgery, such as this patient who has nearly full thickness scleral invasion. Earlier, we would inucleate them. Currently, what we do is we excise the tumor, flush with the sclera without 
losing the tectonic integrity of the sclera and for the residual tumor within the sclera we do a secondary plaque breakages so primarily we excise the tumor in flush with the sclera then we cover the bare sclera with amniotic membrane leave it to granulate or heal after about 4 to 6 weeks you do plaque breakage therapy that's called secondary plaque breakage therapy because here we wait for the pathologists to tell us whether the base is involved this is quite logical if you are really not sure whether the base is involved or not then you can resort to secondary plaque breakage therapy wait for the pathologist to tell you or confirm that the base is not involved and the location of involvement and do plaque breakage therapy this gives very good results all these patients were earlier managed with secondary plaque breakage therapy despite the extensive scleral invasion they all look good following plaque breakage therapy this patient has completed about 5 years of follow up you can see that his affected left eye looks nearly normal without any cosmetic deformity and also his ocular surface looks very good without any side effects of plaque breakage therapy not even a cataract cataract is not generally a complication of surface plaque breakage therapy because we only treat about 2 to 2 and a half mm breakages can you save this eye extensive scleral and corneal stomal involvement 5 years ago i had said no now it is possible excise this tumor partially in flush with sclera and in flush with the rest of the corneal stoma don't go deep and do lamellar sclerectomy or keratectomy and for the residual tumor do plaque breakage therapy and these patients do quite well but what about these patients where surgery may not be possible at all this patient has necrotic sclera necrotic cornea if you were to do surgery in this patient you would have a large perforation in the eye which may be very difficult to repair in these patients we do primary plaque breakage therapy primary plaque breakage therapy is when you don't do surgery we already know that the tumor has gone into the sclera and corneal stoma estimate the depth by imaging and for that particular depth place the plaque right on top of the tumor including a safe margin and these patients tend to do quite well this is one more example of a patient where primary plaque breakage therapy was done for corneal stromal involvement where we thought that surgery would be a little dangerous for the tectonic integrity of the eye and this patient also did well and the success of plaque breakage therapy is about 90% in terms of eye salvage what's new at least for india was that plaque was very expensive now we make it in india ruthenium is currently made in india by uh, barc which is a government of india organization this is 5% of the cost of a plaque which is imported so it has become more affordable and every ocular oncologist can get hold of this plaque and use it very simply one more newer advancement is a plaque where ruthenium is on both the sides of what looks like a simplefron ring for simultaneous treatment of both the palpebral as well as the bulba connectiva at the same time this is also made by this is a custom prototype currently by brc BRC is also coming in with a strontium medical applicator, which may be very useful for localized scleral invasion. So next up, uh, question is how to minimize the risk of tumor recurrence in those who are predisposed, such as HIV positive or zero trauma pregnant ozone patient. In those, we do what is called immunomodulation. This is a protocol-based management. If we are trying use of one million international units per ml of interferon alpha 2b once a day indefinitely and these patients currently are doing well they have a much reduced chance of local tumor recurrence if they are on interferon as compared to if they are not on interferon so these are the kind of patients where you want where you want to do topical immunomodulation so this is the data that we had earlier 20 to 40% reported local tumor recurrence generally within 2 years now with the protocol that i just mentioned we have less than 5% of local tumor recurrence in fact it's come down to about 2% so in conclusion i would say that excision with tumor free margins and resection edge cryotherapy provides impressive tumor control in patients who have a specific indication for surgical excision beyond what you can do for them by means of topical therapy of course you have to take care of oncological principles such as edge control and base control with appropriate image imaging and also histopathologically guided adjuvant therapy for much better outcomes thank you so much